Hey, y'all. It's Patreon Tuesdays. Get this party started. It's Amber, a.k.a. Watch Amber, the co-founder of the Herpes Can Never Movement. I help women heal on purpose. I've been called to help women feel unashamed, empowered, and worthy, and I'm using my real-life experiences to do so. I'm an entrepreneur. I'm a certified life coach. And I'm so grateful to have each and every one of you on the call. Thank you so much for your support. Shout out to our Patreon, y'all, the real MVPs. And I'll introduce, hand it over to my, the founder of the Herpes Never Movement. Hi, my name is Shana Singleton, aka the Herpes Goddess, Goddess Queen Mother. I am the founder of the Herpes Can Never Movement. I've grown the largest herpes community of over 230,000 because I inspire people to love themselves more. Our mission is to make everyone uncomfortable until the herpes community feels comfortable being open about their status and proud of their sexuality. I am so happy to have you all here today. It is Tuesday. We are healing. We are trying to find more ways to change the narrative around our herpes virus, to change the narrative that fuels the stigma mm-hmm. and, and, and find ways to break through. Welcome. Welcome. So, didn't we give them some homework last week? I feel like y'all had a response. Weren't y'all responsible for journal writing something down? Yeah, we had a journal prompt. Mm. Yeah, y'all had a journal prompt. And the affirmations. And saying your affirmations that you created last week from the list that we made. No. Who been saying the affirmations? Me or y'all? (laughs) <laughs> I did it a good three so times, sorry. but I fell off. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm going to do better, though. Yep. Tell yourself that. Say you fell off on you. Yes. Ooh. And, and when you fall off on you, guess what? You, you, you give room for other people to fall off on you. Mm. So you're going to do better. It's, it's already done. It's already done. Show up for you. Tell yourself something good every day, even if it's just one thing. Wake up, yes. make a habit of just getting the first time you see yourself in the mirror. Oh, you beautiful. Make that a thing that you do. Oh, you fine. That Even is a good thing. Like, oh, you fine. When you see yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking in my mirror right now, like, oh, you fine. Ooh. Look at it, this. No, I have Ooh, been doing fine. that more. I can't tell you, I've been doing that more. Mm-hmm. It was just reading the affirmations that we wrote last week. I was had, I think I said them in the mirror like three for three different days, but I noticed that after that, you know, it was just lighter days. Yeah. Them affirmations was hitting. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's good. I just had to ask. I know we had the, that journal <clears throat> prompt for you guys and your affirmations from last week. So I just wanted to see how many of you guys actually took it to heart and incorporated that in this past week for, you know, to help with your healing and your, and your self-work. Mm-hmm. I do have a question. Yes. How did you notice a change in your stress level or behavior or just you, period? The days you, the three days you did do your affirmation and then the days you didn't do your affirmations? I did. I noticed that I went into the day with a positive mindset and I just felt a lot better. And like the days I didn't, even though I didn't say those specific affirmations, I was still being more loving to myself. But the days that I did say the positive affirmations were a lot better. Okay. Thank you, Marquita. Thank you. You're welcome. Appreciate you for sharing that. Okay. I was seeing if we had our new Patreons on the call because we have a few new ones that have joined since last week, but they're not on the call just yet. So they'll get a chance to hopefully catch it again over on the Patreon page. Catch the replay. Catch the replay. So shout out to all of our new Patreons and of course our existing ones. We're thankful for you. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. So what what do we want to talk about today? Well, Does anybody, you got something? Because I want to see if anybody has any questions or, you know, any topics that they're wondering about maybe from this week to last week. So I don't know. You just ask them. What's up, y'all? Does anybody have any questions? Like any, like sometimes something pops up during the week where, you know, 
you weren't maybe expecting. So I just wanted to know if anyone on the call had a situation or a question um, specifically before we moved forward. But if you um, guys do, oh, okay. Go it ahead. wasn't a question. It was just like something I noticed, like how things come full circle. Like when Shana was saying how she wanted this to become a nonprofit. And before my dad passed away last year, like he was, he was incarcerated for a while. So he was like really adamant on starting a nonprofit. So I don't know. I just feel like everything happens for a reason. So like being involved in this is like a way to connect with him, even though he is gone. So I thought that was so cool. Mm, so that was cute. For mm -hmm. sure. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh. <laughs> Okay, well, good. I just wanted to put that out there. So if anytime someone does, just unmute themselves and speak up, y'all. We won't see that many faces today. I was going to say something. Mm -hmm. um, so I haven't actually been doing anything on the Facebook page just due to the fact that I'm an instructions type of girl. So I'm literally just waiting for um, instructions all the way through, like a list of instructions, physical instructions. Yes. Thank you, Pamela. That those are those documents are being put into the share drive so that you can reference them directly. So they're on the way. Thank you. I just mm -hmm. wanted to say that just because I I know I haven't been doing anything and I know I signed up for it. <laughs> no, no, you're good. Thank you for letting me know. I appreciate it, boo. Pamela, you look cute. Hey, queen. <laughs> Thank you. I'm actually on vacation with my best friend and my sisters and uh, my best friend daughter right now. Oh, okay. Yes. On the call, tapping in, making sure you still make these club uh, Patreon calls. Like I'm talking about Clubhouse. Patreon calls. Clubhouse is tomorrow. Okay. Okay, Shayna. I just wanted to put that out there. Okay. Well, Ladies, we've already went over spirit versus ego. We've been over you versus you. We've been over transferred energy. When I did the example of how energy can be contagious. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> now, today's question is, are you self-full? When people say that they are chasing the bag, they usually mean they are chasing money. If we change the meaning of chasing the bag to mean more of just more than just money, then our bag should be filled with self-love, self-worth, financial stability, our own happiness and self-care. Our bag has to be filled in order to show up as the best versions of ourselves for everyone else. The best mother, daughter, aunt, sister, cousin, niece, etc. If we keep digging in our bag to take care of everyone else, we are not only doing a disservice to ourselves, but everyone else we love as well. This is why we must love and put ourselves first, even before your own children, so that you can guarantee to show up as the best version of yourself. Once your bag is filled, you can create abundance. And with that abundance, you can take care of those you love. But until then, your bag is priority. And if you keep pulling from your bag, you'll never be able to create the abundance you need to take care of everyone else. Mm. It's like being on a plane and the flight attendant tells you, in case of an emergency, you put your mask on first before helping someone else. You can help <laughs> multiple people if you take care of yourself first. But if you put yourself last and you go to help somebody else put their mask on before putting your mask on, you'll lose oxygen quicker. And then you can't put anyone's mask on, not even yourself. Mm. Mm -hmm. So mm. does everyone have their notebooks and pencils or pens? Because I'm the journalist. Ready. <laughs> okay. This is a good one. The first prompt is just me asking questions, okay? Will you give your last dollar to help a friend? Do you ignore your boundaries to protect someone else's peace? 
Do you tell others yes when it means you have to say no to yourself? Do you hold back from being your authentic self to make those around you feel comfortable? Does validation fuel your actions and emotions? Okay, I'm about to set a two minute timer. If you answered yes to any of those questions, you are not self full. Now in these two minutes, I need you to free write. Even if you don't know what to say, make sure you say, I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say until you figure it out. I need you to reflect on this exercise and these questions. And if you did say yes, or if you did say no, if you're self full, if you're not, I need you to reflect for two minutes, starting now. All right, hello. Time is up. Woo! Now, if you did do the exercise, I need you to take a moment to clean up whatever you wrote. If you did find yourself saying, I don't know what to say, I don't want to know what to say, scratch it out on your paper. Scratch out all the blah, 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 blah moments and come up with something because I would love to hear everyone's journal entry the cleaned up versions without the I don't know what to say <laughs> me too gonna get 60 seconds to do that hopefully it don't take that long did you do the journal Amber I did I can't wait to share my answers baby <laughs> I knew where you was going with it I was like, wow, I've really grown. Y'all know journaling is my thing. Right? Journaling is your thing, thing. The journal. <laughs> That's how I got to know myself. So therapeutic and so I valuable. Hear myself, become self-aware. You know, you, Shana, you, can, you, um, can you repeat that one more time? Because I have to walk away from the camera oh, for a second. Yes, yes. I just given everyone a second to clean up their journal entries. So if you did find yourself saying, I don't know what to say, I don't know what to say, cross it out because I would love to hear everyone's journal entries. Whatever you feel comfortable sharing.
Okay. Okay. Did you want to start, Amber? Sure. <laughs> I will go down and read my list of answers, just the responses. I know we probably can't even remember the questions, but the responses are no, not anymore, not often, nope, and no. So <laughs> those are my responses. And my journal entry said, I said no to every question, but I will say that at some point in my past, the answer has been yes to everyone. There has been a lot of self-reflection and growth that has taken place. Choosing you first might seem or feel foreign at first, but it will always serve you. So that's what I had to offer up. I'm that first one about giving my last to somebody. It almost tripped me up because I'm almost like, yeah, I want to be. That's what type of heart I have. But in actuality, how can I give my last to someone else and not and ha not have it for myself? And it's just about realizing that self full behavior and breaking the, the mindset that it's selfish behavior, because that's what we've been conditioned or programmed to believe that serving you, filling you first is selfish when that is and in all actuality, it's selfful practices like that, that will help you see the value in you. So you can give that to others and also receive that from others. So that's what I said for my journal entry, Shana. Thank you so much for it. I loved it. I, I, I'm like, y'all, I'm gonna be taking notes and go right along with everybody. So I loved it. Thank you. Can't wait to hear everybody else's responses. Who wants to go? Anybody? Somebody, anybody. Don't make us start randomly I'll unmuting y'all. <laughs> yes. Okay. Hey, Kwana. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, this is what I answered. I said no to all of the questions because through all that I've been through and grown to learn is, baby, I got to have me, love me, choose me, and take care of me. I am no longer going down with the Titanic. I will and, and can no longer give my last dollar to help a friend. But what I can do is share some resources with you to help you go get that dollar. And that's as far as I got before the timer went off and I'm trying to clean <laughs> it up. But yeah, for the most part, I answered no to all of the questions and just pick you back in really quick on what Amber said. I wasn't always there, you know, so just being able to sit here smiling you know, writing that and knowing that, you know, if nobody else knew that, I love that. I know that now about myself and I choose me is absolutely lovely. So yeah, that's my answer. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. I love that we get to, we, we got to hear ourselves out loud sometimes. You can write it down, but it's a, it's a great practice to read it out loud too. Cause then you're like, oh, I wrote that. I said this. Oh, I did that. If you find yourself trying to edit your journaling, stop. Oh, I spelled this wrong. Or I got to scratch it out. Or I don't want to say that. Say it. Mm. Keep going. And then read it out loud. Because that's still you on the paper. That's still you. Yes. So, so don't block yourself from getting to know who you really are, even if it's ugly. Mm. And if it's ugly. You have yes. to speak those ugly moments to make them something beautiful. What's next? Thank you, Kwana. That was amazing. Appreciate you sharing that, my darling. Um, Who's up next? I can go. Yay. Okay, Marquita, go ahead, boo. Okay, so for the questions, I put no, yes, 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 and then sometimes. Okay. I think I remember the last one was, no, the one before the last was like, are you authentically yourself or something like that? But um, I wrote, according to the test, I am not selfful, and that's something I can agree with. I am working on putting myself for, first for me and loving all of myself for me. Um, there have been times where I was a people pleaser pouring from an empty cup. I want to be better for me. I want to grow into the best version of myself I can be. I love that. Yes. I love that. Thank you. Thank You're welcome. You. Let me review these questions just so y'all remember the questions. It was, would you give your last dollar to help a friend? Do you ignore your boundaries to protect someone else's peace? 
Do you tell others yes when it means you have to say no to yourself? Do you hold back from being your authentic self to make those around you feel comfortable? Like not telling people you have herpes. Does validations fuel your action and emotions? The fear of someone finding out you have herpes is that validation that you're seeking. That's a good one. That last one, that validation piece, everybody needs to really, like I remember Marquita said her answer was sometimes I believe to that um, question. And that is, I feel like one of the harder ones to break because you sometimes can be acting so self, so subconsciously that you're not even aware that some part of you is seeking external validation with your actions. That takes like next level self-awareness um, to start to like break that down. So um, thank you, Marquita, for your honesty with that one. I'm no so problem. big on spells that we speak. So I would say when you do your journal entries and you have to answer questions, keep it yes or no. If it's sometimes, that's yes. You keep it all the way of being with you. Mm. A little bit, that's yes. Because now it's like, okay, yes, I can do something about it. When it's sometimes, we speak that sometimes spell and we keep that sometimes energy and that sometimes is going to keep happening and going to keep repeating. When we say, yes, I do it, I don't want to do that no more. The answer is no now. We can move forward with the no spell, but the sometimes keep us in limbo. It keeps us in between the yes and the no. Who's next to share? That was so great. I'll go. Hey, yay. Um, I'll put um, yes, no, 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 and no. Um, I put, I have learned over time to love myself and put myself first, but being that I will give my friend my last dollar, dollar is because I help others because I feel I am blessed and I feel it will come back tenfold into a blessing. Yes. I love that. Yes. That was my mindset too, Leslie. Like, that's how I would think. Like, I'm going to get, because I've already been given. And once I give, it is going to come back over and over again. I just had to get to the point to where I had a, like boundaries in my own life to where even that fell within a boundary. Like I can give my last, but my last means I have this for me. Um, because at the end of the day, you know, that's just the point of awareness I had to get with myself that even setting those I'll do any and everything that I can to this extent that still prioritizes self um, because from a healthy like perspective and not being like selfish or anything like that. That's what I'm trying to get to. Yeah, you you working, you here, you showing up, Leslie. Yay, boo. That first question, I, I made it a point to put it there just to to stress the um abundance that comes from putting yourself first if I tell you no you can't have my last dollar because I'm about to put it in a savings account I'm about to invest this dollar then I end up getting all the dollars I need to be free and now I got all these extra dollars in because I already got all the dollars I need to be free is in my bag now when that friend come to me needing a dollar I can give them several dollars instead of my last dollar because I've made myself like a priority because I'm self full. Because at one point I said, it's going to be all about me. I'm shutting everyone out until I learn how to love me. And now I'm a hundred percent and I got all this spillage in my bag. I can create other bags, other people's bags now, because I took time to fill my own shit up, zip it up, lock it, put it in the closet. And now I can pour into everyone else. But when I was taking out that dollar out my bag, knowing I ain't have it to give, I was doing myself a disservice and I was doing my friend a disservice. Because if I was a hundred, if I showed up my best self, I would have been able to give her more. See, I don't, I don't really like the term of chasing a bag because I feel like when you say I'm chasing a bag, the bag is running from me. So I just don't, I don't agree with that, <laughs> that okay. term. So think about filling a cup. It's just wordage. I go with chasing the bag because it's popular right now. 
That's why I say, you know, we know it as chasing money. I say, no, find all the things that's going to fill your shit up. So I can respect the chasing the bag thing. I don't like that spell neither. We can switch that. We can switch that. Thank you. Eve, Skylar. I know Pamela, you 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 got palm trees in the background. I know she's on a whole vacation. Hey, I'm so excited. Like, <laughs> I can go. go. Thank it's you, Skylar. Oh, hey, Skylar. Hey, Boo. Skylar. Hey, yeah. Um. So I'll share mine. Okay. Um. My answers were yes, 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 and no. Um. I wrote, I'm not self full. I was like, I'm just going to read it. <laughs> I feel like I, okay. I'm not so full. I pretend like I don't give a fuck about so many things and act so careless sometimes, especially with myself. I always feel selfish. Like I can't say no to people if they ask for something from me because I feel like it probably took a lot to, uh, it took a lot for them to come to me to ask for help. I feel like sometimes I please people too much and give away too much of my energy. Okay. I love that. I love it. Keep it all, all the way 100 with yourself. <laughs> yes, I love yeah, that. Like you said, it's not always pretty, but it's like, I don't I don't mind that side of me. <laughs> yeah, I, love I accept all parts of me. Yes. Yes. Yes, queen. And that those that's when you can actually do the most about them. Mm-hmm. You accept it. <laughs> when I, I know for sure. And the first part is like, you know, just being aware of it. I feel like it's like the whole Alcoholics Anonymous. Like the first step is acceptance. Yeah. And you got to know that you are this or that you do this in order to change it. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Scholar. That was great. Um, Learning so much about you guys. I'm in my feels. Yeah, I'm in my feels. I'm in my feels. Uh, like we, it's really a community growing. The no, Patreon, family, the Clubhouse family, because we got regulars on Clubhouse too. Yeah, it's it's like unreal. I'm just like, uh, y'all are my y'all talk about we y'all's best friends and y'all said like y'all are family for real, like cousins, like dead ass, like. Family. I don't play about y'all at all <laughs> community i'll be on it <laughs> <laughs> at all not a little bit okay so eve are you prepared to go i am i'm at target so why are you, you just always just <laughs> <laughs> at target though hold you on, should what? pop up on a camera like that okay. <laughs> i'm at target guys. Yes. yes queen yes queen <laughs> um so what's interesting is um can you guys hear me? I'm like trying to talk under this mask. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, I did this exercise with Shayna like weeks ago. I was part of um like a boot camp that she had. And sadly, I don't think my answers have changed. And I'm like very disappointed in myself because I thought that I was, I feel like I'm a lot stronger in some areas. Um, but so for like for the first question would I give my last dollar to a friend this time I said no whereas back then I would have said yes um but even just reflecting on the other questions I've noticed even within since March 3rd I've had people staying at my house back to back to back so people visiting me for like a whole week and all those questions really made me reflect on how much of me I've been giving to those people okay um sorry I had a distraction um but so yeah it just kind of made me reflect on how I thought I was doing much better but now I'm realizing that I still have a lot of work to do and I need to do a better job at knowing that I'm not responsible for other people's happiness I'm not responsible for other people's feelings and that it's okay to say no but it was a good reminder Mm. thank you Eve that was amazing I love that Eve because even now with my journaling I know I've done my work and I'm healing, but some days I can answer all these questions, no. And then some days I'm answering these questions, yes. When I just Mm. spent months saying no to it because bad habits stick. It's a habit. And I'm just, like I said, I met myself in 2017. So I'm a baby into breaking my bad habits. And my bad habits come right. It's just the matter that awareness 
that journaling, that writing it down. Oh, I said yes this time. What is going on? Mm It's a bad habit again. It's repeating. Get out of that. Throw that away. We don't want that. But it's not like, oh, I've done my healing work. And now every time I'm going to, I got to answer these questions. It's going to be no, 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 no. It's going to be times in your life, triggers in your life, instances in your life when those questions are going to turn right back to yes. And you're going to have to go to that younger portion of yourself, the one that you thought you'd grown, for, grown from, mm-hmm. go back to your younger self and ask her, how did, you, how did we get out of the, this moment then so I can do it right now? Mm-hmm. Yes, that's so good. Like, that's so good, y'all. I hope y'all let that marinate. Like, that's so good because I didn't even think about that till Shana brought it up. Like, right now, all of my answers are no. Like, I answered them honestly and that with the first answer that came to my mind they were all no but she's so spot on I could be in a different season where one of those answers literally could be am I acting and seeking validation one day that could be a yes because of where I'm operating from because now I'm you know in front of new people or now the circumstances have changed or now I haven't been doing as much work on me so I don't feel as confident like all of those things are such great things to remind yourself about this healing that we're doing. And like Eve said, like she kind of did a temperature check and she feels like, hmm, she's in the same spaces. That's good that she's honest with herself. But hopefully now that she's kind of got a chance to marinate on the fact that she's there, she's like, okay, if I want the answers to be no, that means I'm going to have to do something other than what I'm currently doing right now. So where can I take action in, in an area to where one of these yeses is now a no? So that's what it always also allows you to do. So this could be a good part of like your, you know, monthly exercise that you keep on rotation because even though Eva has already done it before, she saw the value in doing it again. And so these are really good temperature check questions for yourself. So I really enjoyed this journal exercise, Shana. Thank you. Thank you, Queen. And even though I didn't, I'm personally not, I personally didn't answer the question, sorry. I personally didn't, I didn't have a pen and paper to write down, but reflecting and listening, I feel like to an extent, I still look for validation in the world. I I personally can feel and say, say no, but at the same time, I feel like that's what, that little bit that holds me back from my big freedom that I speak on, when I speak on why is it that I struggle at times from being just blatantly open with it and still holding it back. I don't care what people think, but in my mind, when you think about it, it's, well, why does it bother you? Mm. So, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Pamela, you know what I can say to that? When I decided to be public, I didn't go into it with the I don't care what other people think attitude. I went into it with a this is a this is slightly a fear of mine. And since I'm scared of it, that means it makes me uncomfortable. And if it makes me uncomfortable, I'm about to grow like a motherfucker. I run towards my fears. I've always been that way before herpes. I joined the military because I was afraid of war. I said, oh, if I'm scared of it, I need to learn how to not be afraid of it. I'm joining the military. Mm. Go with that approach because fear is false evidence appearing real. It's not fear. It's not fear. It's just Mm -hmm. you being uncomfortable. Mm. get uncomfortable like getting uncomfortable when you see opportunities to get uncomfortable be like oh this I'm about to be friend. crazy it, it gives me a rush i don't do roller coasters anymore but i like to get into some shit that's gonna grow me yeah get into some shit that's gonna help me practice my triggers yeah i was telling amber i purposely go the people who trigger you the most is gonna teach you the most about you because they're gonna pull these emotions out of you And instead of becoming the emotions and reacting, this is a great opportunity to practice doing something different. The hard shit, maybe not saying anything back, maybe not having a clap back, maybe just listening, maybe not screaming, maybe try to do everything that you wouldn't do. That's the Mm. uncomfortable shit. Cause that pride, that ego gonna come back and be like, call her a bitch, say something back. 
How dare they feel this way about you? How dare they say that about you? No, ignore all of that. That's your ego. That's the bad habit. In those triggered moments, you have to practice doing something different so that mm-hmm. you can control yourself. So you can navigate at the times you feel uncomfortable. You can navigate during the times you feel mad so you don't become angry. So you can navigate and find your way back to your peace. Don't lose yourself. Always, the goal is always to get yourself back to your peace. So Mm -hmm. in those trigger moments, they're blessings because you have opportunities to practice. If you don't practice, then what you gonna do? You gonna get into a relationship with all these bad habits. When you had all these moments and all these people and all these times to be triggered to practice before your relationship even came. And if you don't practice, just imagine how you're going to do when the opportunity does present itself and you ain't had much practice. Ooh, you don't want to um, practice on, a, on your forever person. You don't <laughs> want to practice when it's time for the game. You want to actually, you want to go out there on the on days off and, and perfect all the other parts of the game. So at the game day, you just doing what you already been doing. And I love that Shana brought up the point about how she didn't get to like await till she was like a F the world mentality before she went public about her herpes, because that was exactly what it was for me. It wasn't about getting, it wasn't about anybody outside of me. It wasn't about F the world. It was about if I do this, I am taking the biggest leap of faith I've ever taken in my entire life. What in the world is bound to happen if I do that? There's so many unknowns that I'm going to open myself up to. So once I accepted that that was the reality from the decision, from me making that decision, that's when I was like, okay, I'm ready to make that decision independently of however the reaction was going to be, because you're not going to be able to dictate or control anybody outside of yourself. So get yourself good with it and, and ready to just and you're never going to be 100% ready. It's just going to have to be something you decide to do and you execute on it. When you're taking a leap of faith that big, when you're stretching yourself that big, it's going to be, there's going to be this unsureness that you're going to have to be okay with experiencing the uncomfortableness, the unknown that you're going to have to be accepting that that's going to be your reality, that you can't fully control how people are going to react in order for you to get your mind there to make the decision. But it's all about where you are and getting yourself, always being able to get yourself back, like Shana said, getting back to you. Um, so that was super powerful. Does anybody have something to add to that or any reflective thoughts? Thank you so much for everyone who was able, you know, everyone who spoke. Um, I, I really like the whole be uncomfortable to grow thing. I guess it makes a lot of sense. Like, and you can apply it to anywhere. It doesn't just have to be like, just do something that you're not comfortable doing or that you're not used to doing. It's like also don't do something that you usually do. So that's yes. like a really good thing, especially like with arguments or even just situational things. Like if you would usually do this, don't do that and see what the outcome is. Yes. So I really like that a lot. Change don't come with doing the same shit. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and literally it, that's fact because like I told y'all, my biggest besides the obvious my biggest trigger and hurt in life is my mom and the day that we had I don't know if y'all remember that we were talking about our moms I think on clubhouse I my car broke down on me and I had to go be with my mom and I was able to do the different things that I don't normally do I don't really argue back I don't really get mad I don't really blow up on her and I was able to get through it without doing it and I had so much more peace at the end of the day than I normally do with dealing with her that it really, like, really slapped me in my face. Like, you really could have more calmness with her if you just didn't say nothing back to her. Yeah. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's funny. Um, they say the things you don't like in other people are usually the things you don't like in yourself. Mm. and for me that was a hard pill to swallow because I didn't want to believe that shit Mm. but in like spending quarantine with my mother I have my apartment but I stayed with her the whole quarantine at her house and I did that 
so that I can, you know, practice my triggers. And staying silent in the moments I wanted to be the loudest person in the room, I got to see all the ways that I'm like my mother. It was like, oh my God, I didn't do that. And that's something she would do. And she's doing it right now. And I do that. I get it from her. (laughs) I wouldn't even have that wake up call if I was busy being my old self, trying to clap back and argue and, and just be just negativity with my mother. Someone got to do something different. Someone got to make some shit shake. I'm going to just shut up and listen. And in those moments, it's like, damn, I do that. Damn, I do that. Damn, I get that from that. And one thing my mom don't like about me is when she tell me something about me that she don't like, I go, I am my mother's child. Mm. <laughs> I tell her, those, I get it from you. You raised me. <laughs> this your trait. <laughs> she don't like that. Girl. But, but. Again, like I said, when I decided to do something different with my triggers, I got to learn all the ways that I am like my mother and Mm. the things that I want to keep from her and the things that I want to change and the curses that I want to break and Mm. how I want to be better because she raised me to be better. Mm -hmm. So those trigger moments are not always negative. We can choose to think of our triggers positively like now when I'm triggered, I don't even blame the other pe- person. I go, ooh, sis, we trigger. What is going on with me right now? That's how I deal with my triggers now. It's like, ooh, I'm triggered. This ain't got nothing to do with you. This all me. Ooh. Say something to me. Is it true? Do I think it's true? I must feel it's true because I'm mad right now. Mm. <laughs> That's so good. That's so good. Girl. It don't even be about the other person. It really don't. It really don't. If they have everything to do with you, it can be some shit that you buried from childhood that trigger bring up. And now that person's catching the wrath of you because they don't trigger some childhood trauma that you didn't even know you had to deal with. Mm. They done told you something slightly off with your hair and you got bullied as a kid for, as, for your hair. And they just wanted to help you out and fix your hair for you. And now you trigger because you think they coming for you because you got bullied as a kid. But in that moment, you don't think about the time you got bullied as a kid because it became a habit. It's a trauma response. So you too busy. You too busy going off (laughs) (laughs) to think it off. To even think that you're having a trauma response right now. Mm -hmm. You take a moment to do something different than what you usually do in your triggers. And you're like, holy shit, I wasn't really mad at him. I'm mad. I'm still mad at this shit. Mm -hmm. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Mm -hmm. I'm still holding grudges with my mama from when I was 11, 12, 13. I'm still a little girl. Your little girl never dies. Your little girl stays with you for the rest of your life. The shit we go through as children be hit us heavier than anything we can go through as an adult. Facts. And they show up constantly Facts. in your life until you decide to do the work to heal your inner child, to get to know your inner child, to even embrace your inner child now. Do things that remind you of when you was a little girl. Eat things that remind you of when you was a little girl. Embrace that innocence, that wokeness before the world got a hold of you and changed your yes. mindset. Yes. Shana's preaching today. I'm just like, Ooh. Okay, sis. Come in hot thing, queen. Come in hot thing, queen. That me. That's the highest. That ain't me. Yes. <laughs> you flowing, flowing. Oh, man. Flowing. Tonight was a good night, ladies. <sighs> I feel good. I feel like I'm glad I wrote that down. I hope you guys will expand on your current journal entries. We took two minutes, but I hope that two minutes, which you wrote, will be a prompt for like a longer journal. Just like, even if it's a recap of what you thought, what you wrote in your two minutes here and now, like don't stop the momentum, let this carry you through and just continue to unpack your, you know, your actions and your behaviors and how are that, are you, are you self full? And what areas can you grow in being selfful? And you realize that when you, when you are the type of person who wants to make others comfortable at the expense of yourself, that is, um, 
that is just a terrible habit to get into because you will always feel like you're operating from a place of lack because you always will. You'll be, there's not, there's the bag is not going to exist that Shana was talking about. You're not going to be able to create that or the cup isn't going to be full if you're constantly pouring it out, pouring you out at the expense of keeping others comfortable or making others happy or helping things just get along. It's time to disrupt what you've just been doing over and over and over with different actions. It's time to react differently. If you've been in a situation, you keep doing one thing, it's time to deliberately do something else to see a different result. That's where we are in our healing. It's picking different actions and seeing them through and staying quiet and observing doing the self-reflection to figure out why you feel the type of way you feel, just really doing that next level self-awareness work. So I hope that you guys enjoy today. I know I enjoyed today. I thank you guys so much for being here. We love you, our Patreons. Y'all are like our inner circle, y'all are our, our family on another level. We're so grateful for your support. In addition to seeing y'all all over our social media, we're on Clubhouse tomorrow at 8.30 a.m. with Euphoria for our Healing Wednesday. So, of course, we'll, we see most of you guys over there, at least in the morning or night or both. So thank you guys for being here. I love you. I hope you guys continue to do the work on yourselves. Choose you first. Be selfful. Um, and just know that you're so valued in our community. And I can't wait to see you guys on Clubhouse. And we're back for our Patreon call this Friday at 8 p.m. I'll be sending you guys the link like I normally do um, for our Friday night call. So Thank you. And I love everyone. And I'm going to let Shana sign off um, before we say our goodbyes. This week's homework. Hopefully, I won't give y'all. Friday is one night. Okay. Next Tuesday, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yes, next Tuesday. <laughs> I need you to show up for you. Every time you find yourself being so full, I want you to write it down. And next Tuesday, I want to hear your list of all the ways you find yourself being so full. I, I literally, I'm sorry, Shannon, really quick. I literally went to the dollar store and bought this little bitty like notebook that fits in my purse. It's like a teeny tiny one just to write down little quick notes. And that will be something great. You can write yourself with this thing in if you want to put it in your phone. But I was like, I want to write it down. I want to see it. So I literally bought this little notebook for like 50 cents. Um, so if you guys just wanted to, that's an option. I know I'm trying to walk it like I talk it and live it with you guys and, and in real life. So I, this is what I intentionally did. So thank you, Shana, um, for that. Queens. Tonight was awesome. I'm proud of everyone, myself included. I'm proud of us. Again, here we are showing up, showing up for ourselves so we can show up for the greater purpose. There's a lot of women and men out here struggling, struggling with little old herpes. Uh-uh, that ain't cool. That's going to uh-uh. Nah, that ain't cool that's gonna end and it starts here and i appreciate y'all and i love y'all and herpes could never ever 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 all right good night queens we'll see y'all tomorrow morning 8 30 on clubhouse all right